Welcome to Supply Chain Now, the voice of global supply chain. Supply Chain Now focuses on the best in the business for our worldwide audience, the people, the technologies, the best practices, and today's critical issues, the challenges, and opportunities. Stay tuned to hear from those making global business happen right here on Supply Chain Now. Hey, good morning, everybody. Scott Luton and Allison Krejci Giddens with you here on Supply Chain Now. Welcome to today's show. Allison, how you doing? I am good and I'm excited. How are you? What? Same, same. Uh, you know, we've got, I love working with you. I uh, love all your your uh, special co-host spots here at Supply Chain Now. I love being included. We love our featured guests and our repeat guests. Uh, and we've got a great one here. Our guest has enjoyed quite a career thus far in the technical fields, uh, currently in the manufacturing industry. And one of our favorite parts, she's helping lots of others, especially kids, learn all about the opportunities that the STEM fields pose. We just love her do good, give forward mentality. So stay tuned for a wonderful conversation. And with no further ado, I want to welcome in Sherika Sanders, PhD and Senior Technical Engineer with Manor Polymers. Sherika, how you doing? Hey, how you guys doing? I'm great. We are doing wonderful. Uh, I really have enjoyed uh, I think this is your fourth appearance with us uh, here at Supply Chain Now, and each one has been a home run. And has Allison, it really been four times? Yes. Yeah. Can you believe that? Oh my goodness! Nice. I didn't even remember that. <laughs> yes, and on your fifth appearance, you get ten percent off a, a BMT at Subway. How about that? Wow! Oh, that's terrific. love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we would upscale. It would be um, it would be Pat's Sub Shop in Aiken, South Carolina. If we if we had to if we really had to um, hook you up with a, a really good sandwich. But I digress. See, Allison, it must Sherica, be lunchtime or something. Cause I always go to food. You always, always go, go to food. food. Um, but Allison, kidding aside, food aside for a moment, where are we starting with our dear friend Sherika today? Well, you know, I mean, if we're talking food, we might as well stay there. Um, so Sherika, let's talk a little bit about where you grew up, your upbringing. If you've got a favorite food dish, maybe from said upbringing, you know, bring that up for sure. But tell us a little bit about that. So I was born and raised in Shreveport, Louisiana. So Alice and I are both Louisiana girls trying to make it in these Texas and Georgia streets. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's one thing that, that we do have in common and, and I just love it. You know, it's always great to meet other folks from, from your hometown. And um, one of my, oh, I, I don't know if I have one favorite dish, but I would say the whole Louisiana cuisine is my favorite food. Um, all the seafood dishes, the jambalaya, the gumbo, the etouffees, you know, those type of things, stuffed shrimp, crawfish. I love it all. Same. Let's just do the whole, let's just do the whole podcast on this. <laughs> yeah. Let's just, right, right, let's right. just talk, let's talk Cajun food. Well, uh, uh, so let me follow up with a quick question. Uh, Sherika, is there one dish out of, out of the Louisiana cuisine that you can rattle off just there that, that we all love? Is there one that you're really good at preparing? So I actually make a good shrimp creole um, that, that my, fam my family likes and they request it often. Um, and I got the recipe from my um, grandmother, uh, my dad's mother. And, you know, she was just really good at cooking a lot of um this Cajun dishes and so that's one that I kind of just hung on to and you know it's like um it's like a comfort food almost because it's you know warm you serve it over rice um you can have you a nice little side salad on the side or some garlic bread or something like that and it just it's a home run every time oh, I'm gonna have Allison. to share a, a book with you I I just got and it's all about the lost recipes that uh -huh. that we're losing in Cajun uh -huh. country yeah um, and fascinating i i kind of stumbled across it on amazon so i bought it but oh, i yes. gotta, i gotta send you a copy because it's please really please do because i'm always looking for new recipes um like you know once a week or so i try to mix it up because you know you're you get into a routine with your family and you just tend to cook the same things right. over and over oh, and yeah. over and so throwing a new recipe in every now and then oh it just works wonders shrimp creole well hey Speaking of, because it sounds like you got that rep recipe from your grandmother, uh, and good, goodness knows we got to bless our teachers, cooking or otherwise. And Allison, I think that's where we're going next with Sherika, right? Yes. So I know, I know how we, you know, we talk food and stuff. Mm -hmm. But can you tell us a little bit about your upbringing when you were a kid? 
Was there a teacher that inspired you to be doing what you're doing now or kind of walk us through that? It was two, two teachers, actually. It's always hard to narrow down just that one person who was extremely influential in your life and, you know, kind of guided you towards um, STEM careers or any career in, in general. But I remember um, so in, in, in elementary school, so we had the same science teacher, um, I would say third, fourth, and fifth grade. And his name is David Lamar. And, and he was my science teacher all three years. And he would have these huge science bowls. And I lived for them. I mean, I would spend weeks preparing for the science bowl. And it was so funny. After I got my PhD, um, I ran into him at one of my favorite seafood restaurants in Louisiana, uh, Freeman and Harris, Pete Harris. Um, and I told him, he's like, so, you know, what are you doing these days? You know, I was like, do you know, I actually got a PhD in chemistry. Wow. And both of us just started to tear up like, and oh. I was like, and you had a, you know, huge part in me going in that direction, just, you know, honing that skill and, you know, ha helping me be competitive, um, in the field and all those things. And then fast forward to high school. My biology one and two teacher, uh, Kathy Williamson, um, I just love the way that she showed her passion for science and how she helped us to kind of um, craft our skill and, um, you know, it was just, it was just fun, you know, and she also cared about us as students. Um, so it wasn't just, I'm coming in here to teach you science and then you go home. She would ask about our home life. She would talk to us about her home life and, you know, just to make sure that everybody was doing well, not just in school, but just in general. And the in these days and times, that's super important, right? Because we're hearing about all these children, especially college students who are committing suicide and those types of things, you know, so it's always good to have that teacher or someone outside of your home um, that can connect with you and make sure that you're well mentally, physically, all of the above, you know? Oh yeah, and it's crazy to think that, I, I think as kids, we take a lot of that for granted. You know, we don't we don't have a concept of, oh, Miss Williamson is, you know, is being like this and she's a good teacher because of it. It's mm -hmm. just, she's a good teacher because of who she is. Mm. Right, mm. right, exactly, exactly. So well said. I, Another right. funny thing about uh, high school is that uh, my my actually my chemistry uh, teacher, he had a Ph.D. in chemistry and he will always try to convince me to go to medical school. And I mean, I, I can tell you guys this because your family, but I, I always tell him, I don't like people like that. You know, <laughs> I'm just I mean, you know, and especially sick ones. <laughs> so I think it would be best for me to, you know, pursue sciences as opposed to um, the medical field. Because, you know, oh, I think you'll make a great doctor, da, 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 go to medical school. No, nah, I don't think <laughs> I'm that good. I'm good. Be... <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> All right, so let's get this right. So uh, Dave Lamar and Kathy Williamson, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, you, you know, the teachers, and, and both of you are making so many great points. Uh, you know, Allison, you're right. We don't get it as young people. We don't get it. Sherika may have gotten it, you know, because um, sounds like they, uh, they had uh, a really deep relationship that clearly impacted her and encouraged her. God, PhD in chemistry. Allison, that makes my head hurt. Because there's so many pay grades above my ability for chemistry. No, I don't know about yours, kidding. Allison. Were you? Oh, yeah. No. I mean, I like, let's just put it this way. When that category on Jeopardy comes up, <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to go be so neat. I'm good. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So let's, let's start connecting some of the dots here. So listeners, hey, we are going to talk supply chain, but y'all know our belief. Uh, we take a very holistic uh, view of supply chain. It's not just as valuable as logistics and transportation is. That's the backbone, right? Manufacturing, I've always believed, is a big part of, of the global supply chain community, I'll call it. So on that note, Sherika, we love manufacturing around here. Of course, Allison leads uh, a manufacturing uh, a company here in the Atlanta area, doing great work. Tell us what you do, um, Sherika, professionally. Um, I, I mentioned earlier, so I have a PhD in inorganic chemistry. Um, that led me to the coatings industry and then to plastics. So I spent 10 years at the Dow Chemical Company, first as a catalyst chemist, um, and then I moved into tech services and development. So more customer facing um, R&D group. 
Uh, and, and now I am a senior technical engineer for a manor polymers. And what, what that really means is product development. Um, any new product that needs to be developed, any uh, long-term projects, um, I, I work on those and I, I'd help develop the product portfolio for the company. And then if any of our customers have issues, I travel to them um, to make sure that they can run our products smoothly or I make adjustments um, here at home to their formulas so that it runs smoothly at their plant. Wow. Um, I bet those, uh, Allison, in my brain, when I was in metal stamping, uh, I leaned heavily on our engineers and our tool builders, and they were the, the technical SMEs, right? It's amazing what they mm -hmm. could do because the problems were so complex, especially when we got into metallurgy and the different types mm -hmm. of metals involved. Allison, I'm getting the impression that Sherika is deep into these complex uh, you know, product development and problem solving conversations. How about you? Definitely. I think that there's a whole nother level of creativity that we take for granted that has to be required of somebody like you, Sherika. I mean, what, what, uh, even if you could look back a few years into what you're doing now, do you find that you're having to tap into a lot of different kind of creative problem solving skills or how does that look different now? Yeah, oh yeah. Um, I can just give you guys an example of a, a problem we had last year and it'll, you know, it actually made me, um, it was, it was a eureka moment, but it also made me think back and say, this is why I do what I do. Mm. So we had a customer um, that had major issues with a sheet product, meaning it was blooming. It was, and then on top of that, it was also causing us problems to make it. So we were having problems making it and then they were having problems in the field. And so I had to just kind of dig into that thing here at home and at the customer. And I ended up developing a new stabilizer for our company that only is available to our company. Hmm. Wow. Wow. That's and cool. so it solved the problems here in our plant. And it also solved the problems there at the customer. And so I had, had to lean heavily, not on the engineering side, but on the chemistry side and find out, okay, so if we have a formula that has, you know, 13 different components, which of these components is causing the problem? And then how do I fix that one component? So it doesn't cause the problem. Wow. Uh, yeah. And so it was just, uh, just an aha moment, a uh, eureka moment, a, you know, all of the above. In yeah, you had of, to have had like a little you know, dance when you figured that things? out. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I, I tease our CEO sometimes because now that we're having a lot of, you know, just in the industry, supply chain disruptions and all those things. And he goes, you know, we're, we're actually doing pretty good in the midst of having all these supply chain disruptions. And I kind of teased him and said, I was like, because um, everybody else doesn't have a chemist that can develop their own stabilizer. <laughs> Heck yeah. Well, so I'm going to simplify this right uh, to my level of understanding, but it's like, the problem hits Sherika's radar, right? And then uh, Dr. Sanders goes into a lab, right? A lab on steroids, I bet. And yes. you know, mixes whatever you do in, in the lab. Again, mm -hmm. that's above my pay grade. And then you come out with a stabilizer. I can, I can see it now in one of those uh, uh, narrow and then it widens out. What, what are those Blast. tubes? Class, thank class. you very much. <laughs> and here y'all go. Here, here's the magic stabilizer. And, and it changes, especially that customer's uh, their problems evaporate. Mm -hmm. So that is so cool. Last time you're with us, if, if I can move forward. Um, last time you're with us and Allison, I'm not sure if you were there. I want to say Donna Krejci was with us in the comments because it was a live stream mm -hmm. and it was, you know, Sherika lives in, in Texas and it was around the time that um, uh, all the ice and the winter storms in Texas. And, and, and we were fortunate to get Sherika to tune in with us. Um, out of all the goodness you share with us, Sherika, the couple of things that really stick out, we still talk about as a team here today. Number one is all of your great work uh, on the, unfortunately, the Columbia disaster with NASA, right? And how meaningful that was to NASA family. I will never forget you telling that story. And then secondly, when folks were asking you, we're going to ask you again here towards the end of, the, end of today's episode about, hey, what do you do to break in? And what do you do to advance? And your response was simple. Allison, it was do the work, do the work. And it was a mantra. If you remember, we referenced it throughout the episode, uh, Sherika. Yeah. So let's do this. The question is, since that was probably a year or so ago, and you've already shared one of clearly your one of your favorite days of work, what else, what else, 
What else has been one of your favorite days at work since the last time you were with us, Sherika? I would say it's the day that I got the email from the Society of Plastics Engineers that said, hey, we are looking to um, develop a diversity, equity, and inclusion advisory board. And I literally paced the floor. I paced the floor because I was trying to figure out, do I even have capacity and time to devote and commit to this? Um, so it was funny because my boss actually saw a, um, a advertisement on LinkedIn as well. And he sent it to me. He's like, hey, this is right up your alley. And I'm thinking, okay, so do I have your support if I decide to do this? <laughs> turn around, like, turnabout's fair play, right? Right, right. He said, you absolutely have my support to do that. Um, and so um, I responded back to the email that I got and I said, um, hey, yeah, I can do this. And, you know, I can spend, you know, maybe four to six hours a month um, on this with you guys. And this has turned into, I don't know, one of the most rewarding decisions that I've made because, I mean, so much has come of me being appointed to that board um in the industry and some of the things that you know i never would have imagined that i would have been been able to impact as far as like kids and students and educational programs for stem so i would say in the last year that's probably when been one of my most favorite days well um allison i'd love to get both of y'all's take here what's one thing that we can do along those lines to diversify the the uh, talent pipeline coming into uh, supply chain manufacturing, but also uh, the STEM uh, positions and jobs out there. What's one thing that you would suggest, Allison? I think you look at your rock stars and it naturally happens. I was with a, a group not too long ago. We were trying to put together a team of a handful of professionals and we we're trying to make sure it was diverse and not only ethnicity and and geography and industry and age and and, and political thought. And we were trying to come up with this group and we spent a lot of time ahead of time coming up with this, okay, well, we'll pick this and then the spreadsheet will automatically show where we are in the diversity. And somebody in the group said, well, hold on, time out. Why don't we just go through the applications and pick the best rock stars out of them and see what happens? Mm -hmm. And it naturally came into place. Wow. I mean, the group was naturally diverse. And I, I think, and it's it's tough because as, as I'm a, a woman in a male-dominated industry, I'm not a woman of color in a male-dominated industry, so sherika has got another level mm. of challenge that she works with. So I hope I'm not overstepping my boundaries here when I say that I think I've got it pretty dang good mm. because I don't have I don't have the additional layers to push through, and I almost wonder what would happen if we all just said, "Okay, time out. Let's let's really let's elevate the rock stars in general mm. and see what happens." Because I think there's a lot out there. Well, so same question to you, Sherika, uh, whether you're, you're following up on uh, one of Allison's comments there, or just in general, what's one thing you'd point to that maybe more companies could do? Um, you know, I think that when we get interview candidates, you know, it's always the same people who are applying because like Allison said, we're not filling the pipeline with enough diversity and like she said in diversity is more than just race right um diversity could be an um uh, a disability you know right um one example i can give in that area is that most manufacturing plants don't even think about hiring someone who's deaf but you can set up your plant to where you have um sirens or visible things or things that like a, a buzzer that you can put on the person um, to use their other senses so that they can be successful in STEM careers. So you asked what we could do. We could, um, I think I've talked about this before, we craft the, the, the job description such that it would um, attract other people because right now job descriptions tend to be extremely sterile. Right. They don't contain purpose. And most people want a job, um, your rock stars want a job where they're gonna feel like they have purpose. And so if those job descriptions are written that way and then you set up your STEM job, um, specifically manufacturing plants and different things like that to accommodate that diversity, then you'll get more people. Excellent point, Sherrick. And I'd go back to the front end of your answer there. And Allison, you touched on this a little bit. 
uh, you know, I think companies, and it's changed a little bit out of necessity, but I think we get into our recruiting ruts and you recruit the same pipeline, the same applicants, mm -hmm. and naturally you're, you're going to be limited to, to um, the different candidates from all the different walks of life and all those different ver uh, uh, definitions of diversity. And we've slowly but surely seen, especially as the labor market has changed, companies getting more creative in terms of how to broaden the tent to bring more folks and more qualified candidates from all sorts of different uh, walks of life into mm -hmm. the the, the uh, pipeline for consideration. So that's, I think that's a critical part of the equation as well. Yeah, and I, I think too that we've got to start younger and we have to make sure that those that are diverse in industry are accessible to the younger generation so that they can see themselves. And mm -hmm. I know we'll talk about it in shortly, but what Shark is doing right now at STEM Club is amazing yes. because people who look like her mm -hmm. and look like her peers mm -hmm. are getting in front of young adults and, and kids who can say, oh, I want to be Sherika one day. I want to be like that. Right. I've dream it or can't see be it. what you can't see. Right. Thank you, Allison. I was, I was, I was searching for it. I couldn't quite find it. You found <laughs> it. Um, so we're going to touch on that in just a second, because that really, I love that, um, you know, that give forward, you know, once you're up the ladder, you got to put the ladder back down for other folks. And that's some of the great work you're doing. But before we get there, Let's step a, a step back for a second, and, and it's an amazing time. It's really a amazing, fascinating, challenging, but innovative time to be in supply chain or manufacturing or really all different segments of global supply chain. Sherika, when you look at global business right now, mm -hmm. what's one topic that really um, has got your attention more than others right now? Um, right now, just because of the, the the climate and the state of our nation, um, gender and 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 race disparities, mm. um, especially in our in our industry, um, and so Allison has spoke about you know the fact that you know we are in a white male dominated um, industry, and that's just those are just the facts that that's just it is what it is. Um, however, you know if you track this thing, there was a big push early 90s to get more women into manufacturing. Um, and we had an uptick, but it's since leveled off, mm. um, quite frankly. It's since leveled off and it's leveled off. Um, and we still have um, different things going on for in terms of the race disparity. So one of the ways that I look at it is that you're dealing with, uh, and, I, and I talked about this book um, the last time where I, hear, I was here called Get Your Shift in yes. Order. Yes. Um, and so one of the ways that I look at it is that, okay, you have different generations di dealing with different things in our industry based on the stance of our nation. So the, in the generation before me, they were dealing with Jim Crow laws and, um, segregation and different things like that. So they only had a little bit of access to STEM careers as it was. You look at your NASA computers, right? Those were black women who were called computers. Right. Who had a little bit of access into the R&D group, but not all the way. There was that one, Katherine Johnson, who made her way through accidentally, right? Um, and, and had to fight the whole time to be accepted because she was the only black female in there with all white men. Mm. So that's one generation. Then you have our generation. So now Jim Crow is, pat, you know, is done. Segregation is done. We're supposed to be included. We're supposed to not be viewed as three fifths human anymore. You know, we're allowed to vote, you know, and all those things. But this is the generation who has parents and grandparents who, who felt that way, who felt that, you know, okay, Black people are not welcome. You know, we should still be seg segregated and those things like that. And so oftentimes microaggressions and different biases trickle down into the workplace that say, for example, myself as African-American woman will have to deal with. Then I look at the generation after me that's coming on board and I have to think about, well, what's their stance on it? Their stance is, if I'm not welcome, I will leave. It's just that simple to them. They, that this next generation, they will come in, they will give you their all, they will give you their best. But as soon as they feel like, hey, I don't like this anymore, I'll just go find me another job. And so you find that they have multiple jobs on their resumes. And so that's one thing that I continue to track and I continue to learn. And like I said before, do the work and grow so that I can be a good leader and so I can be a good influencer. Because if you don't realize what you're dealing with, there's no way that you know you can be successful at it. Okay, 
Allison Sherika dropped a ton of truths in that last four minutes or so. Um, I've got a couple of thoughts, but I want to give you a chance to, to weigh in on, on, on something that resonated with you. So I, I have noticed uh, really post COVID that just exactly what you said about resumes with lots of, lots of jobs, you know, six months here, a year here. And I'm having a hard time getting out of my old school way of thinking of, yes. oh, well, gosh, you can't, you can't hold a job or you, what's the matter? You just you keep bailing on somebody investing time in you. And it, there's a lot of assumptions I sit here and I make as a business owner of, mm -hmm. you know, well, do I even want to give this person my time a day? Right. And I, I think it's crazy. I think it's an interesting perspective that um, in a way I'm almost jealous of the younger generation <laughs> to be able to, you right? know, it exactly. Looks, it's freedom. <laughs> exactly. To be able to say, you know what, I'm not going to stick it out for 10 years somewhere that I'm unhappy. Life is short. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, to, you know, to a degree, well, I actually do want to hire those people. <laughs> so. I think one of the things you're saying uh, from these candidates that are, have, have multiple role, uh, jobs is they're saying what I'm hearing both y'all allude to is I'm not putting up with your bull shift anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, Sherika, right. Mm -hmm. Using play a play on that, that, that yeah. title. Secondly, don't leave on, him out. Don't right. leave him out. <laughs> Sherika, I think from the last, what you just shared a minute ago, we could dedicate a series to, to dive in deep into so many things you mentioned, but, uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to mention two other things. Um, you know, Allison a moment ago was talking about kind of that, that conscious bias that, that she's trying to retrain herself when you mm -hmm. see a candidate with lots of jobs, right? Mm -hmm. I think all of us uh, are challenged with that. And I would say, and, and arguably, unfortunately, as I've learned on social, uh, Elba Preha Gallagher really helped me better understand subconscious bias, right? Things that are in your blind spot that you do, and you do it just because it's like baked into your DNA and you don't even know you're doing it. Right. Um, and that's some of the things I think you were kind of alluding to that all of us need to really look in the mirror and, and, and try to put a big old spotlight in that blind spot we have to uncover what we're doing because of that subconscious bias. Um, your comment there, Sherika? Oh yeah, um, unconscious bias, subconscious bias, um, those things are super, super important. I mean, because I mean, people, I would say that uh, a lot of folks would tend to see other people's biases before they see their own. Um, and it is really important to survey yourself mm. um, and figure out, okay, why do I feel this way? So sometimes if something happens um, and I, I feel some kind of way about it, and I'm not quite sure that I actually know why I feel what I'm feeling, I stop and I pause and I try to dissect it and say, okay, so why might I be feeling this way? Right. And oftentimes we feel a certain way because of history and prior things that have happened in our lives. You know, everybody has their own filter that they're looking through. So I take a look back at, you know, my filter and say, well, I probably feel this way because X, Y, Z happened. And I'm attaching this current situation to that past situation. Mm. And I try to deconvoluted to make it make sense for today's time. So yeah, those are all the biases. And I mean, you know, um, we had a, a conference, a diversity conference, and there was one speaker from Dow that said, hey, if you have a brain, you have bias. Everybody needs to know if you have a brain, you have bias because like, oh, I'm not biased. I'm not biased, you know, or I'm not this. I'm not that. If you have a brain, you have bias. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it's interesting. Um, I put a take out there on LinkedIn one time um, on subcon uh, unconscious, subconscious bias, whatever word I'm supposed to be using there. And man, there are some folks that don't believe in that one iota. And, you know, I gave up, uh, I, I'll playfully call it Facebook fighting, social media fighting a long time ago, because you just don't win. Right. Man, you would have thought I kicked people's dogs. Uh, there's some lots of passion on both sides here, but nevertheless. Um, so Allison, uh, so much good stuff here. Where are we going next? I think we're getting into the, the, the STEM stuff and the, and the give forward stuff that uh, Sherrick is doing, right? Yes. Yes. I would love for you to tell us more about SPE Lions Den STEM Club, what it is and why you're involved. And I mean, it's just been so much fun watching on social media. So I want the world to know about it. Oh yeah. Oh man. This, 
I mean, this has been near and dear to my heart. Uh, this actually started with the appointment to the uh, SPE DEI Advisory Board. We were just kind of talking about, you know, what's what's going to be our impact? What's going to be, what are we going to do? How are we going to make a difference? And one of the ways that we're making a difference is to tap into uh, the school systems. So we actually have um, a SPE club going on in Detroit and as well as uh, Lake Wells, Florida. Uh, McKinney is just so happens to be um, the one that, that, that I've been heavily involved in. And um, when I first got on the board, it was just uh, Detroit and Lake Wells. And we said, OK, what where do we want to go next? And everybody was saying, I think we should go Texas, but we don't know exactly where Texas. And we tossed around a couple of ideas. We talked to a few school district leaders in Houston and Frisco and all these kind of places. And I mean, strange things happen in the shower. One day I'm showering. I'm like, why don't we do it right in my backyard in McKinney? Why are we looking at all these other places when we can do it right here? So I get on the phone, I call the CEO of the SPE Foundation. I'm like, her name is Eve Vitale. And I'm like, Eve, why don't we do it in McKinney? I already have, we have the, the business connections. We have everything right here in McKinney. And she was like, let's do it. And within a month, you know, she was down here. We met with all the, um, the schools and the, the business partner liaisons and all that kind of stuff. And they were like they 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 looked at the proposal and were they were immediately on board. This could help our kids. This is going to be great. We're, and you know we are targeting um, underrepresented minorities for this group, but everyone is welcome. And we have a nice mix of uh, diversity and uh, different children from all walks of life and um, backgrounds in, in the club. And so how we started it is we had a big kickoff day where we touched every single sixth grader in that middle school. And we did polymer science, we did all types of hands-on STEM projects, they had a blast. But what we were really doing is we were trying to see which one of those students had that light that man, I wish I can do this. You right. know, I lo I'm loving this. And from that, we got uh, 28 kids um, who are now part of the SPE Lions Den STEM Club, and they named themselves. Really? <laughs> yeah. So, um, of course, Society of Plastics Engineers, Fabian Middle School, they are the Fabian Middle School Lions. And so they were like, let us be the Lions Den. And I'm like, I love it. You can be the Lions Den. Uh, and I mean, we had a white coat ceremony, so we gave them uh, lab coats as part of their initial PPE, learning about personal protective equipment, um, and they spent the day here with me at work. Um, and they did every single thing that you can do um, in this company. We had them wow. make sales calls. So I had a little script for them and they made sales calls to customers to find out what that customer needed and how manner polymers could help them. I mean, they had a blast. They went out on the manufacturing floor. They did qu the quality job for a couple of hours. They did an R&D job for a couple of hours. I mean, they they just did everything. Um, and, and they had such a good time. We've done lots of things with them. We had them bring a picture of themselves. And we had um, um, them make a, a 3D avatar of themselves and so that they can use themselves um, as a figure in the metaverse. Um, and they learned how to do that. And Man. I mean, they, they have gotten a lot of exposure in a, a, such a short period of time. And our next thing is that we'll do a 10 day intensive right before the beginning of the school year starts where they hunker down and get ready for the next school year. And I'll share with you guys, um, that's just a small sport, small part of the overall vision of uh, the STEM club. We'll have science fairs. They'll do participate in an essay contest. Um, and then they will also walk, we will walk with them now sixth grade all the way through 12th grade. My vision is that by the time they're sophomores and juniors, we will have a lab built um, that they can come and do research. We will give them grant money so that they can learn how to manage their own research projects. Um, we just did this in Detroit and we had some students present for the UN. Um, wow. Their research projects, exactly. Yeah, that they, they're doing. So we'll replicate that same thing here um, in McKinney so that by the time they're in their juniors, we'll do, I'll do the ACT, SAT prep for them. I don't got know if you guys know that's in my background as well. So I used to do ACT, SAT prep. So I'll do that for them as well. Um, and then we'll take them on college tours. 
and get them ready for college. Holy cow. I'm always impressed when someone dedicates an afternoon to kids. Yeah. This is your life. This is, <laughs> you're dedicating six plus years. This is wow. awesome. It really mm -hmm. is. And I can only imagine the impact, the outcomes. I can only imagine the PhDs in inorganic chemistry or other STEM related fields that, that you're definitely going to um, help them uh, fulfill their potential. And I think for the, I should have shared this in the front end, but for the three people maybe listening that aren't familiar with STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, right? Right. Is that right? Okay. I'm going to make sure I got it right. Um, sometimes I forget my vowels and, and other <laughs> things, but I want to make sure I nailed the acronym. Um, okay. So I meant to ask you earlier, and um, I, I think it's apropos here, you know, that movie Hidden Figures, you mentioned Kathy Johnson earlier. Uh, the movie Hidden Figures is such a great film. Have you ever shared, and, and, and maybe do you think there's value in these in these uh, wonderful group of kids that are now learning and, and um, uh, uncovering all the potential that it's in the STEM field to understand what what other professionals had to fight their way through? Do you see any value in that, Sherika? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, it's funny. I, the I think the first time that I was on your on your show, um, I actually got a few calls of, from science teachers that said, "Hey, we saw your um, your podcast, and we had our students watch your podcast. But not only that, we had we went back and we watched Hidden Figures." Wow, I love it. <laughs> I know, right? And I, I thought that was so great um, that they that they went back and they watched the movie. And I think I had shared with you guys, like I had that actual experience of when she was walking through the wind tunnel and her heel got stuck in the grating on the floor. That actually happened to me. Now, I wasn't in a wind tunnel, but I was on a manufacturing floor. And I'm thinking, I will never wear heels again to a manufacturing plant. What was I thinking? <laughs> that. You know, that is so awesome. You never know when that, that, um, that ripple effect will happen. It's something you mentioned, you kind of speak it to the universe and mm -hmm. you never know who's going to hear that and then take action because of something that, uh, Sherrick or Allison has said. So, well, um, I love you know, that. Allison. Yeah, please. They, uh, I think this would be the appropriate time then for a little chemistry pun. Ah. And that is if you're not part of the solution, <laughs> you're part of the precipitate. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a precipitate is, but it sounds funny, Allison. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, I think I posted that on Facebook. Oh, you? I, you probably did, and that's probably where I got it. I'm gonna yeah. do some googling tonight. Um, thank you all, uh, smart people, for uh, making me feel inadequate on your dad jokes, Allison. Um, uh, one quick follow up. Uh, we were talking hidden figures. Uh, we were talking high heels. I had one thing I was going to ask you about. Oh. You actually received an award because the first time we met, mm -hmm. I think you'd gotten the 2018 Hidden Figures Award of uh, of Dallas. one of the cities in, in Dallas. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, and and you know it's important that we remind folks. Uh, it, I bet you had lots of interesting conversations related to uh, you getting that recognition, huh? Yeah, it was uh, it was 2017. Um, it was through the National Society of Black Engineers, NSB, and our Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson set out to find uh, 10 women in the Dallas area who could they, they could name hidden figures of Dallas based on their contributions to science and technology. Wow. Um, and so we got, you know, plaques from the president, certificates. I mean, the whole nine, it was a, a, a great experience. But you're right, um, that spawned a lot because I mean it was in the newspaper and so it's just like okay which one of you can I get to speak at my conference and so we would kind of huddle and say okay you go to this one you go to this <laughs> one or if five of us could make it to one you know that would be cool but it was good that it was 10 of us and not just one person mm. spread then love it um but yeah and I mean I still get calls hey I saw this article are you available to come and speak to my students or you know um uh, sit on this panel or mm. you know whatever it is but mm. yeah it was a great experience i, I tell you it's just te it's testimony to the impact you're having um and and you know allison i, I thought it to you and I, I know we got another question or two with sherica but can you do you pick up like me do you pick up on the passion and the, just a thrill that share you can see it it exudes as she's talking about what the stem stem club's up to you know oh, how yeah. cool is that Oh yeah, you could definitely tell. So I guess from when, when it comes to the lion's den, when it comes to the STEM club, and really over the past 
I guess year or so, was there ever a moment, some aha moment that you had along the way that um, maybe you had something in mind the way things were going to go and you had this grandiose idea about, you know, these kids, they're going to plug into this, they're going to love it. They, I'm betting they exceeded your expectations because that's mm-hmm. just typically how it works. Mm-hmm. Um, but were there any aha moments that you could share with us? Yeah, uh, there actually been been quite a few. <laughs> uh, so so one that that um, oh actually a couple that that stay with me and have stayed with me throughout this is that um, I always when I make a post I'll say hashtag on assignment. And the reason that I say that is because I feel that I am called to do this. You know, this is this is a gift, you know. And so um, after the White Coast ceremony, and I don't want to start crying here, but after the White Coast ceremony, I had a parent come to me and she said, you know, I've been looking for STEM clubs for my son for years. Um, And she said that uh, I have four children. I would have had to send him to private school to get what he's getting from you. And I cannot afford that. And so she was like, God bless you um, for doing this because otherwise my son would not have had this opportunity. And so I go, you know, I'm glad I paced the floor that day. I'm glad I made the decision to go and ask my boss if he would support me um, and be appointed to the advisory board because had I not, you know, stopped to read that email and to answer the call, you know, um, then I could have been off doing something else, you know, not even being being in place and in position to make this happen for um, a lot of kids who would not have otherwise had had the opportunity. And so that was just an aha moment for me um, that, hey, I'm on the right path and I'm doing the right thing. Mm. Okay, man. Um... I do too. And I, I want to give hugs. I, I love, I, I really love what you're, what you both do. Cause you both, you know, Sherika and Allison, both y'all do so much in the industry and Sherika, I love how, how important that, that, that you, cause you are called to do this undoubtedly. And the impact you're having when you hear that anecdotally from, in this case, the parents uh, that you're providing opportunities that they would have gone without, mm-hmm. you know, you don't want any kid to go without. Right. So let me ask you two quick follow-up questions. Uh, um, going off 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 road here a little bit, but are would you be open to benchmarking kind of how your sim club works? If any of our listeners in in any any other part of the world would mm-hmm. want to form something similar, would you be open to that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Benchmarking? Yes, yes. And then absolutely. second, uh, and then secondly, if if is there any way that um, any of our listeners or companies, you name it, um, could support what you're doing? Is there any, anything you would be looking for? Yes. Um, so that that's the other thing. I mean, uh, to make this happen, obviously, we need funding. Um, and, you know, I'm always um, on the lookout for people who want to support um, our efforts, um, because it, it, it this these things don't happen for free. I mean, that's just, it is just is what it is. Um, uh, one way you can connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, share Sanders PhD, and I will um, direct you to support directly to the McKinney ISD um, STEM program um, as we continue to grow. Because one thing that I didn't notice that there are five middle schools in McKinney and we're adding e- one each year to all five have a STEM club, right? So that's a minimum of 300 kids that we'll be impacting per year. Wow. Um, and, you know, to, to, to make sure that we stay on target with that goal, we'll need funding to make that happen. And so if any companies out there um, want to support us in any way, n- no amount of money is too small um, to make this happen for us. Or other ways that you can support our uh, provision of supplies, lab supplies, um, or another way that you can support is provision of PPE. So the lab coats, those things aren't free, um, you know, and, you know, we every kid gets their own lab coat. And, and, and these are things that they need. I mean, you can't walk uh, perform an experiment in a lab and not, you know, be protected from all the things that you're coming to contact with. So those are different ways. And then the other way outside of contacting me is through the um, Society of Plastics Engineers website. There's a way you can donate directly to Society of Plastics Engineers Foundation. It's for SPE.org, the number four. 
um, and you can donate through that through that website as well, and it will get distributed across all of the um, STEM STEM programs. Love it, um, love it. All right, one final question, and Allison, I want to make sure folks know I connect with you and the Dave Krejci Foundation, um, folks. If you can help, if you can help out these efforts, clearly they're making a massive impact. Or if you want to, you know, be a, a Sheriff Cassandra's PhD in your own neck of the woods. You know, there's a great benchmarking opportunity here and goodness knows we need it. We need folks like Sherika and Allison to, to, to roll up the sleeves and really make, you know, get involved and, and frankly change these kids trajectories. Right. Uh, one final question is if, if any of our listeners are students and want to break into manufacturing and want to break into STEM or supply chain, whatever your last appearance with us, it was your advice to them was do the work. As you've mentioned, I've mentioned here, anything else stick out Any one other thing that you'd like to, uh equip them with and when it comes to advice know your why know your why and the reason and i and i tell this to my stem club kids now um it will give you staying power in our industry when you know why you're doing what you're doing mm. so initially um i had someone tell me when i was getting my phd um you know sherika i really don't believe that you'll really use this PhD, but I think this PhD will give you a platform to do something greater. And I didn't get it at the time, right. you know? Um, and while I do love science and I do love what I do, um, it can, it's the gift that keeps on giving. It's the gift that um, keeps on continuing to place me in places that I would not have otherwise been. Um, I wouldn't have been in that program where Allison and I met had I not gotten that PhD and became the director of R&D at Authentics. Um, and so it, 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 knowing your why and knowing that, hey, I chose this STEM career because of something that's larger than myself. Um, and, and, and it is to change the life of a child um, which then changes the lives of their families, which then changes the lives of their communities. Um, and that's bigger than me. And that's the reason that I will never walk away because I want to continue to make that impact. So well said, and even more importantly, so well done. You know, it's deeds, not words. That's how we try to operate around here. And you're both of y'all are the epitome of that. And um, thank you so much, uh, Sherika, for joining us thank once you. again. Dr. Sanders, um, <laughs> folks, you can connect with Sherika uh, via LinkedIn, as she mentioned, there's, and she mentioned a few other ways. But uh, hey, connect, have her, have her speak, uh, help support what they're doing, benchmark what they're doing. You know, there's so many great opportunities here. And Sherika will have you back again so soon. Um, all right, Allison, man, I'm with you. I got chills throughout uh, the last hour or so. Um, but let's make sure, Sherika, I don't know if you know about this. Um, I know that y'all have known each other and collaborated, but uh, Allison uh, founded, co-founded, what have you, the Dave Krejci Foundation. Mm -hmm. And they're also making a massive impact on, on kids here. Um, Allison, tell us a little about that and then uh, how folks can support it and then how can folks connect with you. Sure, thank you. So the Dave Krejci Foundation helps kids play sports outside inside of a metro Atlanta area, mm -hmm. primarily. Uh, we help kids play sports when their families can't afford it. Mm -hmm. And so kind of to the, the same same line of thinking is that if these kids can do something that they love and it helps to give them a, a purpose and it helps their families to be able to breathe a little bit easier and, and you know continue to do what they need for their family, then the community is better for it. And then maybe one day that kid will pay it forward him or herself as well. So yeah, definitely check it out, DaveCrachey.com, D-A-V-E-K-R-A-C-H-E.com. Um, and we're just, uh, we're grateful for our, our local supporters and those that help to spread the word. Mm, outstanding. So check out the website. And Allison, if folks want to connect with you, uh, LinkedIn, is that what you suggest too? Yes, they can find me definitely on LinkedIn. I'm Allison Giddens. Uh, I'm at WinTech here in, in Kennesaw, Georgia. So would love to connect. Outstanding, man, both of y'all. Again, I, I love connecting. I love collaborating with, with you both. I think you, um, you challenge what leaders should do and, and the impact they're making far beyond their, their own four walls, you know, um, you know, beyond inventing stabilizers and solving customers issues, uh, those highly technical stuff, or, you know, building, um, some of the, uh, very complex parts for the aviation industry and beyond. I mean, beyond that the value there's so much value and impact there so 
Big thanks to our featured guest, uh, Sherika Sanders, PhD, again with Manor Polymers. And let's get, we get this in SPE Lions Den Stem Club. Yes. Um, right. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Sherika. Thank you for having me. I always have a good time with you guys. <laughs> and of course, my fearless co host, uh, Allison Giddens, always a pleasure. Um, be, be sure to check out the Dave Krejci Foundation. They've helped over a thousand kids now play sports that they otherwise wouldn't have had the resources to do. They would have gone without. Uh, so Allison, always a pleasure to knock out conversations like this with you. Thanks for having me. You bet. Okay, folks, uh, man, the bar has been set by, by uh, Sherika and Allison. Um, hopefully you enjoy this conversation as much as I have. I'm so glad we were able to carve out time with, with our guest here. Um, but whatever you do, there's so much that, that Allison and Sherika has challenged you with, right? Whatever you do, hey, choose to do good. Lean into giving forward and acting so you can be the change that's needed. And with all that said, we'll see you next time right back here on Supply Chain Now. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being a part of our Supply Chain Now community. Check out all of our programming at supplychainnow.com and make sure you subscribe to Supply Chain Now anywhere you listen to podcasts. And follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. See you next time on Supply Chain Now. Supply Chain Now.